I know something. For that, what we went through already, we went through all these visions of how alone wanted to become many and how he did it. Actually, it was always a puzzle for me how, why these texts speak in this way. Uh, that he first he cast out of himself, then he enters himself by himself. And, um, and then after this vision, which mother gave us, it becomes very clear what it means, double creation. Right. So we went with you quite a bit. We came up to here. Uh, let me start then with the, with the mantra. Om Vang me monasi pratishthetam anome bachi pratishthetam avira virma edhi vedasyama ani stha shrutam me ma prahasihi ane na dhi te na horatran samdadhami ritam vadishyami Satyam Vadashyami Tanmam Avatu Tadvaktaram Avatu Avatu Mam Avatu Vaktaram Avatu Vaktaram Om Shanti 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 This is Shanti Bhatha of Rigveda, which is very beautiful because it says that my mind is established in my speech and my speech is established in my mind. Good morning, Rashi. Oh, good evening, I guess, sorry. <laughs> and there is a request. Have I moved in an entire universe in three minutes? No, Please, no. Vladimir, don't go ahead. I couldn't connect. You know, Mumbai shut down. There was no power in the whole city today. Now it's okay. But please, Vladimir, if, please, Vladimir, start from the top. Vladimir, please, Vladimir. <laughs> you are joking with me. <laughs> please. Yes, I I've, I've just was um, doing mantra, entry. And that was the mantra for you know, mentioning that my mind and speech have to be revealed to me and they depend on each other. My mind is established in my speech and my speech in my mind. I shall speak the truth in dynamic sense, ritam vadishyami, satyam vadishyami. I shall speak or reveal the truth from static point of view, you know, something which is, which cannot be changed. Uh, may that increase me or protect me, may that increase the speaker, increase me or protect me, protect the speaker, strengthen me, that's the better word. So this is the Shantipatha of Rigveda. There are no godheads, there is just speech and mind, yeah. who are two foundations of the Veda, two foundations of knowledge. And usually our speech and mind are not going together. Yeah, usually we say one thing, think another, and, and feel something else and want something else. And because of that, we are very dispersed and very distracted. But if we would be very well composed, our speech and mind would dwell on each other. Um, okay, here we are. Here we stops, maybe a stopped. We let us uh, look at this, uh, starting from here, from this slide, the evolution. A soul of the divine is here slowly awaking out of its involution and concealment in the material in conscience. This is the whole 
previous presentation was about that, how it happened. There was a first stage when uh, great emanations which were supposed to create the worlds fell into their opposites because of the freedom and enjoyment they were given as a principle of creation. And then there was another type of emanations created by the Divine Mother, that means by the consciousness power within the Supreme, Aditi, or was found in the infinity of the divine being, that new quality which was stronger than first four emanations. This, that it was stronger is very important because otherwise it would not plunge into the darkness of the first because they would dominate it. It has to be strong. By the way, this uh, motive you find in the Rig Veda all the time that Agni created for himself the force which can overcome, overforce every other force and power. He is the power which can overtake, overforce you know, any other force. It's, it's quite interesting in this way to see it because, because of that Agni who descended into the darkness of inconscient, uh, this uh, evolution can take place. And slowly that which is involved into the deepest darkness can slowly evolve out of it, conquering more and more uh, and occupying more and more those fallen emanations and converting them into the luminous prototype, divine prototype. And that is the evolution. In one sentence here, very beautiful, the soul of the divine is here slowly. Why slowly? Why not immediately? Why should it take billions of years really to evolve? And there is a reason. To maintain the individual form separately and to become the divine is a very difficult task. How would you do it? You may join the divine somewhere else, and then you, you feel the presence, but to become in the body, to build the body which will be the divine, which would embody all those levels of consciousness or that higher consciousness, supreme consciousness, freedom, bliss, and, and uh, beatitude, and power, and knowledge in this body. This body has to grow to it. We have to evolve, we have to develop all these faculties of consciousness, organs. We do not know, have organs yet. We are still in the stage of animal evolution. We are still half animal, as Shubhendu says, half beast, half God. Man is half beast, half God. We are in the animal body, but we are already looking for something higher than the beast. So we have to eat food, we have to procreate. We are born and we are dying. Notice, it's all animal nature. We, of course, made out of it a very big deal from our food and from our procreation and family life and whatever. We made it sacred. We made it, we tried to make it really divine. And it is very true. And it is needed to make it divine rather than just discard it. But still, we are looking for something much more than that. And that is the evolution. As Shobino says, uh, man is a transitional being. He's not yet arrived. He has not yet arrived at his destination. We are on the way, as the Veda would say, the ever advancing pilgrim. We are constantly on the way, going higher and higher, developing better and better, organs. Now look at our organs. We have already hands which listen to our will. It's amazing. Animals do not do that. They instinctively move, instinctively react. And I could do it at will. I can choose what to do with my hands, with my thoughts, with my feelings. I'm choosing it. I have a free will. I have a mind. Mind equals free will. I can choose even to die for some cause. I can, 
I was always uh, joking with my uh, students in IPI, the, the biggest miracle, do you want to see the biggest miracle what, uh, ever? And this is, I will show you, uh, it's, it has to be shown. Yeah? I, I will tell you, I will take this hand, put it on this hand on the top because it's in the picture, and then I raise it again. Now look what I do. I did it. I did exactly what I said. You knew it that I will do it. And I did it. And this is the biggest miracle. We can do things at will. It sounds like very ordinary thing, but everything is extraordinary here because of that. So we can go even farther. We can start doing many more things. That is what we developed. It is our stage. We have this capacity. And with this capacity, we will go even farther and even higher. We will be intuitively understanding each other. We will be seeing and understanding each other's needs immediately. And we will not resist them. We will support each other. We will exchange the beatitude and happiness with one another. This is the next stage which is coming. Higher than mental, over mental, and finally supramental. So here, this beautiful quotation from Sri Aurobindo from Savitri. He sleeps in the atom and the burning star. He sleeps in man and God and beast and stone. Because he is there, the inconscient does its work. Because he is there, the world forgets to die. It's a miraculous world. Why it doesn't fall into oblivion? Why everything moves all the time? Scientists try to make, to figure out and say that we are moving by inertia. And it's such a powerful inertia, which moves for billions of years, all these stars and galaxies. Is it really inertia? Uh, from one big blast, some big bang, which was a joke first, and then became a theory and very serious theory of big bang. So we are from why that big bang took place. What is that bang about? So there is no answer. We are always trying to answer things which we cannot, uh, other than this world is the paradox, as Shibinda says, with the God for key. <laughs> this world is a paradox with the God for key. So we spoke about terrestrial evolutionary process, double process, yeah, the development of the species, of the body, of the instruments, organs so to say, and the embodiment of the soul, reincarnation, which is coming, building the body, goes out, and then again comes building the body, learning from the body, learning from the mind, vital and body. These are the components of our embodied state. And then again goes, again revisions, again views how to manage one's own growth and individualization in this particular framework. Individualization is the key. He wanted to be many. He, the Supreme. We have to become Him. And when Sri Aurobindo speaks on the Svabhava, there is a beautiful quotation I will open maybe because I have another presentation running uh, at the same time. Uh, on Svabhava, I was doing this for IPI and here, uh, Rinku and uh, uh, both of them. So hear this quotation, just look at this, what Sri says about our unique Svabhava. All action on the normal level is determined by gunas, by nature. We are all part of nature. The action which is to be done, kartavyam karma as it were. But this is a general law. We are built from nature. Our mind is built from the component of nature, thoughts, feelings, vital body with all the chemical components from nature. But while the general rule of mind and action is the same for all men, we see too that there is a constant law of variation 
and each individual acts not only according to the common laws of the human spirit, mind, life, will, but according to his own nature. There's something new develops. Something new is taking place through this process of evolution. This is the evolution of the soul, which becomes a unique individual. Each man fulfills different functions or follows a different bent according to the rule of his own circumstances, capacities, turn, character, powers. What place is to be assigned to this variation? This individual rule of nature in the spiritual discipline? It's a profound question. And where does it come from, this kind of unique individual? So uh, when I was uh, presenting this in IPI, I used this vision. If you uh, read essays on the Gita, profound book, I recommend everybody to plunge into it and go through. There is, um, there is a chapter on Purushottama. So Sri Aurobindo describes, explains that Purushottama is actually neither transcendental, nor this world. He is not only belonging to uh, Kshara and Akshara Purusha. Akshara is a, a, eternal, indestructible, and Kshara changeable Purusha. Yes, Manas, Prana, and Annam, and existence, consciousness, bliss, Satchitananda. In between, we have Supermind, which links both together. But there is a mystery because that linkage of the transcendental existence, consciousness, bliss into our matter, life, and mind is taking place through someone or something which is neither of these. And that is Purushottama. He is transcendental to the transcendental. It is he who wanted to be many, not this Satchitananda. Satchitananda is a typal world. These are dharmas as it were, dharmas holding the, the, the capacity of all the, all the materials, as it were, from which everything will be built. But Purushottama is the one supreme person. He can be impersonal, he can be personal, but he wanted to be personal, the person in individual framework. And he manifests here and evolves as a psychic being to a higher and higher capacity and uniqueness of his own. This is something, and that's the mystery. The rest is quite clear. If you take Indian philosophy, Satchitananda, Vijnana, Manasprana, Annam, it's quite, quite clear. We understand these levels. But who is there within these levels evolving? It's not very clear. And that is him. It is his projection. Into Paraprakriti, Paraprakriti is Satchitananda, and Aparaprakriti, lower Prakriti, Manas Prana and Annam. Okay, I'm removing this. Uh, just wanted you to see this beauty of this uniqueness of this. There is at the same time an invisible process of soul evolution. It is him who is evolving into unique formation. Every one of us is a unique representative of the Supreme. We do not know yet about this. We think we are more kind of common beings, but we have that uniqueness in us, which is growing. And that's why Sri Aurobindo always cherished the, uh, the individualistic age in, in Europe, which took place, individualism. Though it was egoistic individualism, it was a necessary step towards subjective age, where you become subjectively involved in search for the truth in your own unique way. There is no other way for us. It's the only way for evolution forward. We cannot become typal beings, like again, I will follow the law of Dharma, I will be kind, I will be this, I will be good, I will be strong. These are typal forms, yeah? Yes, strong, good, yes, it's good. 
that's good. These are the formations which I may use, but I, who am I then? Who am that? Am I the strength, knowledge, or what am I? Maybe this formation, this kind of body which knows or brain which remembers, these are formations from the world collected together to express that unique growth of consciousness within us. And that's why in the physical world, you do not ho have the same fingerprints. You will not find the same fingerprint in the world. Unbelievable. You will never find the same, even pebbles on the shore or leaves on the trees. I'm kind of always. So everything is different, uniquely different. We don't see it yet. We see with the mind, which makes types. Yeah, cows are this, but each cow is different. We have to look into Vaisheshika uh, Darshana. Vaisheshika approaches every subject and object as a unique creation. It's quite interesting also. Yes? That is reason in Western psychology. Initially, psychology was considered study of soul. And then eventually, as we grow towards today's time, it is now considered as study of myself. Yeah, we, slip, we slipped away from the real concentration. It became behavioral psychology, biological psychology, whatever, but the soul. You know? Yes, absolutely. I agree totally with you. Psychic or psychology is the same. Psyche is the soul in Greek uh, literature. So psychic being is that, but they mm, distinguish between the soul as we know it as jivatman, which is unborn self, and antaratman, which is inborn self. So jivatman stands always above. It's that witness, purusha, unborn self, but his projection into the midst of creation is psychic being, which evolves, which reincarnates and grows in power and grows in awareness how to be here in time and space, though it comes from the eternal infinite world. So it wants to stay here in this form, in this formation, which it creates over time. Vladimir, um, can I ask a question, please? Yes, please. What is the meaning of he is the transcendental of the transcendental? Yes, uh, you will find it also in the Upanishads. So transcendental is Satchitananda, being consciousness bliss. Yeah? But he is even beyond being consciousness bliss. He is also beyond Asat, not only Sat. He can be free from being and non-being. Because these two, being and non-being, are his two modalities in which he can be or not be. <laughs> Doesn't matter because he is always. You know? So he takes the modality of being and there he acts and enjoys all his infinite qualities, as Sri Aurobindo says. And then he steps into Nirguna Brahman, Brahman without qualities, that is to Asat, and there he rests from the enjoyment of his infinite qualities. <laughs> so it's like he has two rooms, as it were. Yeah? Where he I can... feel again. Yes? It's like you're studying magic. It is, in a way, absolute magic. The highest magic ever possible. Uh, Vladimir, can you repeat the last point about... Uh... Purusha and how it enters. I couldn't get the last point. Um, he he has two major uh, poises, let us say like this. Saguna Brahman, Brahman of Satchitananda, where the, all the qualities, gunas, of his, his infinite being, consciousness, power, and bliss are revealed. They live there. Yeah? Infinitely live, eternally immortally 
and uh, he enjoys the, his qualities in Sat, Sat Chitananda. But in, in Nirguna Brahman, Asat, he rests from the enjoyment of his infinite qualities. He can be himself, as it were. And that is quite interesting because if you take Buddhism and other religions when they speak about Nirvana, Nirvana actually is that Asat. And uh, many people consider this to be the highest, and it is tr true, it is the highest. I was showing this to our, here, the, the picture, which I may use for this presentation. This is the levels of consciousness which Mother uses. Uh, she explained this to Huta, and Huta made the painting. And look at this, you have inconscient below, then you have physical red color, then you have vital dark blue, dark um, violet. Vital is dark violet, notice, blue and red mixed. Then you have mind which is blue, darker blue. Then you have higher mind which is lighter blue, illumined mind even light sky blue. And then you have a shift, intuitive mind and over mind. These are levels of over mind. And then supermind, that very supermind, golden color, which connects the transcendental to this lower hemisphere. And then you have this rosy, it's not very clear here, rosy, but it is like rosy red um, bliss. And then you have consciousness, which is pure silver. And then existence, these are Satchitananda, yes? Existence is white and be beyond unmanifest, asat, you see another white. So white beyond white. And then beyond all these, there is a supreme person. This is him, we are talking about him. The, he is the transcendental to the transcendental. He who always and alone is. And we are his modalities. We are, he, we are he's trying to be us. We resist, of course. <laughs> we want to be ourselves. And that is his major quality. <laughs> And our ego he even was permitted for that purpose, to become selfish individual, because that is the way, the path towards this unique individual being. Uh, Vladimir, I had a question. Yeah. Um, so in the, on the path which uh, Rishi Muni took or take, the one of uh, complete nirvana, when they go to complete isolation, because uh, the, the they try and reach the highest state, right? Uh, but they are not in the world. Like they are isolated and they try and reach the highest form of divine. And that happens. So why is it recommended? In, I mean, not recommended, but uh, why is it said that one should also work on the physical, I mean, body as a physical instrument, but not just go on a hill or a mountain and try and reach uh, nirvana? We are here for one reason, to embody him as a unique individual. So body is essential for this because body separates us from other beings. We have a gap. If you come to the vital world without the body, your vital um, elements will be dispersed. They will be taken by the vital plane. It will become food for, for everyone. You don't have individuality on the vital plane or the mental plane without the body. The body is an anchor which allows you to formulate, to form your unique individual in this manifestation. That's why it is so important. You cannot progress without the body, Mother says. It is only in the body that you can evolve. The moment you step out of the body, there is no evolution you fall into a particular formation where you are. So you stay in that form. The gods are not evolutionary beings. They are typal beings. They don't evolve. They're helping us to evolve, us embodied here in the body. 
And even Sri Aurobindo says, if the even great gods, if they want to change and evolve, they have to take a body. They have to be embodied. Just think about it, body, what it means really. It has to represent. It has to represent. And even more, one can say that our earth is a unique place. Uh, because Mother says that the Earth is the psychic being in the universe. It is on Earth that evolution of species and consciousness can take place. That's why everyone is drawn to it. Asuras, Rakshasas, Gods, Gandharvas, all kind of creatures. They're drawn to it because here there is the mysterium of becoming the Supreme. And uh, if, we, if any of those creatures want to be uh, evolving, changing, they have to come and become physical on Earth. All right, uh, this is really a fairy tale. When you listen to it, it's like, wow, the Earth is so important, the soul of the universe. And on this Earth, India represents that psychic being of on Earth, among continents, Jambudvipam. India is in very special position in that way. You know, that's why everything happened in India of this kind, all the rishis and uh, all the literature is written there of this spiritual highest kind. Okay, I'm going back. Would you explain also between uh, from mind to super mind? There are so many. Would you explain maybe later? But would you definitely? I will take that uh, uh, next time okay. uh, because I have to finish this one vision of the creation. So as we remember, there were two stages. Yeah. So in the, within these two stages, we can see two developments of the instruments of knowledge and the soul is embodied. These are two stages which are constantly evolving together. Now I will, I have here a passage which is interestingly explaining the same thing from the philosophical point of view. I'm not sure whether I should do it, but I will do it anyhow, okay? Brahman says Sri Aurobindo has projected in itself this luminous shadow of itself and has in the act begun to envisage itself and consider its essentialities in the light of attributes. He who is existence, consciousness, bliss, envisages himself as existent, conscious, blissful. This is the formation of the self, yeah? of the unique self in the future. From that moment, phenomenal manifestation becomes inevitable. The unqualified chooses to regard himself as qualified. The one becomes the many. It's a very interesting explanation of the same process what we are talking, two stages of creation. And then if you look at this formation of Brahman spirit, he is existence, consciousness, bliss, supermind, mind, life, and matter. And within it, there is a self-awareness of Brahman, which becomes Purusha or Atman, self. Sat Purusha, divine self, Chaitanya Purusha, all conscious soul. These are Sri Aurobindo's words. Ananda Maya Purusha, all blissful soul. Vijnana Maya Purusha, great soul. Mano Maya Purusha, mental being or self. Prana Maya Purusha, vital being. And Anna Maya Purusha, physical being. This Anna Maya, Maya is made of matter, made of prana, made of mind, made of supermind, made of ananda. And notice he didn't make it chinmaya. Sometimes they use also chinmaya. So made of consciousness and sanmaya, satmaya, made of uh, sat. But the, he doesn't use it. Uh, he doesn't use it because he believes that from Ananda Maya Purusha, the 
changes are taking place. Ananda Maya Purusha is the first emanation of the bliss from the conscious existence. Sat and Chit. Um, now, why the have... use? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was wondering why the use of the word Maya? Um, is, is there a meaning with, uh, is there a context of Maya here, the way we understand? It's, yeah, it's a... not Maya, it's not long Maya. Maya long from root Ma to create, creatrix. And later it is an illusion. And this is Maya shot, uh, yeah? Which... Uh, Maya, okay, okay, okay. Right. It's Thank not you. that Maya. And that Maya also in the context of the Veda, uh, means the creatrix, the mother. It doesn't mean the illusion. Later it became illusion when uh, there was an Advaitic philosophy dominating India. So you can see, so what we have, we have the levels and we have the presence on each level, particularly individual self-present. So when Brahman becomes self-aware, self-considered, uh, then he becomes Atman. That's why they say Brahman is Atman. But Atman is self-aware. Whereas Brahman is as it is. Yeah? He is not aware, unqualified. Chooses to regard himself as qualified. So let us look into this profound topic in psychology, the double soul. That means... In this case, I mean the unborn self and inborn self. It's very helpful to see how integral yoga is connected to this vision of the Veda, because then we have another language which helps us to understand the Veda. Once we go through this, we will read the text of the Rig Veda in a much easier way. The true being, says Sri Aurobindo, may be realized in one or both of two aspects, the self or Atman and the soul or Antaratman, psychic being or Chaitya Purusha. The difference is that one is felt as universal, the other as individual, supporting mind, life and body. When one first realizes Atman, one feels it separate from all beings, from all things, existing in itself and detached. That is that witness, yeah? which is not engaged in working of Prakriti, constantly viewing it from above. When one realizes psychic being, that is presence in the heart, it is not like that. For this brings the sense of union with the divine and dependence upon it and soul consecration to the divine alone and the power to change the nature and discover the true mental, the true vital and the true physical being in oneself. Both realizations are necessary for this yoga. So we have two presences in us. One is in the heart, which is constantly seeking the divine manifestation in our mind, vital and body constantly trying to influence them, learn from them. And the other is presence above, which supports this presence in the heart. They are kind of two beloved connected together. These are two major centers. That's why in integral yoga, we have two uh, gurus, Sri Aurobindo, who is present from above as he himself explains, and the mother who is present in the heart. And they both do this work. They connect the spirit to nature. She is Paraprakriti and Aparaprakriti. She brings the influence of the spirit down and manifests it in the body. So if we review what we did, what we said before, the first creation was the fall of the spirit, which laid out the field for its future manifestation. It's like a field into which we have to enter. It's like the house was created. All the levels of consciousness were unfolded gradually, creating all the worlds in the involutionary order. 
from light to darkness, from superconscient to inconscient, from spirit to matter. In this case, we can see that matter is nothing but enterprise of the spirit. Anambrahmeti. Spirit is matter. Matter is spirit. It's not something else. It's not some other creation. It is him, fallen being, the divine infinite being fallen into material existence, unconscious existence. The second creation was the plunge of the Supreme into the darkness of material inconscience, bringing the aspect of the self into existence. And from here we have this manifestation, he becomes existent in terms of individual growth and realization. From this point, matter becomes animated and the evolution takes place. It goes on till the psychic being is fully individualized and formed. And the instruments of its expression, body, life, mind, are fully developed to embody the spirit. We are building the instruments, the body, by this descent into the midst of inconscient. Now, there is constant ongoing tension between our inner being, the divine being in us, and our non-divine being outside on the periphery, on the surface. We have all the levels from the most unconscious to the most conscious within ourselves. This dichotomy, this division, these two in us, they are actually addressed in the, in the Veda constantly. We will see it everywhere now, from now on. You will see this. Uh, even in this mantra, Sahana Vavatu, may he protect us both. Who are these two whom he has to protect? May he enjoy us both. May we create a powerful result. May that what we learned, two of us, stay luminous for us. May we never be in discordance with each other. Mavid Vishabahai. Yeah. So these two is my inner being, innermost, and my outermost being. So if these two are harmonized, if they are bridged, then the manifestation is taking place. And they are bridged, only we are not conscious about it. This kind of a gap between me on the surface, in this body, vital and mind, and me in the soul, who I am there. It's like beyond a base somewhere. And I have to bridge that soul to the front, to allow it to come to the front. So this dichotomy has to be resolved. And Shubindo resolves it by third creation. The third creation is the supramental descent which reconciles nature, nature with the soul, enthrones the psychic being as the lord of creation. It is he that who wanted to be many and gives it a direct access to the higher realms of being and consciousness, to Satchitananda, establishing the law of the spirit in the whole nature. If we read how Sri Aurobindo describes it, it is profound. He says that everything, all the movements, thoughts, feelings, touches, outer touches of nature will become an expression of the divine bliss. Everything will be just multiplying this uh, bliss constantly. So, here I'm coming a little bit to integral yoga. If you have questions about these three or something is not clear, please, this is the time. Because now integral yoga will take it in and we will see how Sri Aurobindo deals with it. Is it clear that this resolution or reconciliation between soul and nature, spirit and matter is done through the uh, supramental transformation, you know, supramental descent. It must be clear. There must be some other force. Um, that... mm -hmm. yeah, so spirit in the first creation, it's uh, it says uh, matter. Uh, I'll just I can't see the slide, but okay. It says something about the spirit. So spirit means the uh, the divine consciousness, is and being. And non-being. 
and Ananda, yes, and the truth, yes. and the mind, and the vital, and the matter. This is the spirit. We made this division for our mind to distinguish matter from spirit. That spirit, matter is spirit. He recognized that spirit is matter. So spirit is the uh, foundation. Yeah. Okay. In which we will be embodied, second creation. We take everything from matter, from vital, from mind, from supermind, and build up this unique murti of ourselves. So this entire entire inconscient, inconscient and subconscious layer is spirit, is it? Yes, like absolutely. It is him. It is the spirit, inconscient, yes. And, and then we take... Yeah? We, we take from a subconscient uh, and then sub, the spirit of subconscient and then we are formed. Is it so? We are evolving from this inconscient to subconscient, from subconscient to ignorance, from ignorance to knowledge and beyond. We are constantly evolving from the most uh, inconscient. And notice he says inconscient. It's an interesting term coined by Sri Aurobindo alone. You will not find it even maybe in the dictionary, English dictionary. But inconscient means not, not unconscious. It means involved consciousness. Involved. It just forgot about itself, but it is there. Yeah? It has to come back to, to remember with itself, as it were. Reconnect with its true self outside. So it's without, it is forgotten, it is lost. Within, it is there. Right. So second is quite clear, there was a plunge into that darkness to bring it back to self-awareness and building the bodies, building these instruments. We are becoming more and more conscious of him. We can even talk about him over internet, you know, on Zoom. Is it not amazing? It is, it's already built in such a way that we could speak about things which are not immediately visible in front of our nose, but which are deeper within ourselves. And then finally, reconciliation is coming from that descent of that link between the super uh, transcendental and this world, supermind. So here we are. There are different statuses of divine consciousness, says Shirobindo, individual, universal, and transcendental. Transcendental is Satchitananda, universal is overmental, where the first rays of the sun reach into the merge into the darkness when they mix up this is creating the universe what we see outside the stars galaxies and so on in the physical embodiment and then transcendental oh sorry individual individual is our unique consciousness which evolves here so there are also different statuses of transformation first is the psychic transformation in which all is in contact with the divine through the individual psychic consciousness. So it is first, it must be first. So the psychic awareness, we have to gain psychic, psychic awareness first. It has to come to the front. The next is spiritual transformation in which all is merged in the divine in the cosmic consciousness. And the third, is the supramental transformation in which all becomes supramentalized in the divine Gnostic consciousness. I have three slides which are explaining each one separately in detail, just quotations from Sri Aurobindo. The psychic being is a flame born out of the divine and luminous inhabitant of the ignorance grows in it till it is able to turn it towards the knowledge. A flame born out of the divine. 
luminous inhabitant of the ignorance, grows in it, in the ignorance, till it is able to turn it towards the knowledge. It is a deputy of the unborn self or Atman in the forms of nature, the individual soul, supporting mind, life and body, standing behind them, watching and profiting by their development and experience. It's a mutual learning. <laughs> the psychic learns from the mind, life and body and the body is illumined by the psychic presence. If it can come forward into the front and govern overtly and entirely this outer nature of mind, life and body, then these can be cast into soul images of what is true, right and beautiful. And in the end, the whole nature can be turned towards the real aim of life, the supreme victory, the ascent into spiritual existence. This is the role of the psychic transformation. The next one, spiritual transformation. The psychic being, notice, he starts with psychic being, which is already in front, leading our mind, life and body in the individual way. The psychic being can, by spiritual influx, enlarge itself. It can overgrow and embrace the whole world. Our, this small Vamana Purusha in the heart, three steps of Vishnu. He can come and take all the world. He can grow into the extent of cosmic existence. In an intimate communion or oneness, he can be the whole world. Or it may become aware of its eternal companion, the universal soul and elect to live forever in his presence, in an imperishable union and oneness as the eternal lover with the eternal beloved, Krishna and Radha, which of all spiritual experiences is the most intense in beauty and rapture. Omirabai, all this bhakti movement, seeing Krishna everywhere, seeing beloved everywhere. All these are great and splendid achievements of our spiritual self-finding, but they are not necessarily the last end, an entire consummation. More is possible. Sri Aurobindo is, you know, <laughs> if more is possible, more than that, to live constantly in the presence of beloved Krishna, then it is like, you know, he's claiming too much. He wants to transform nature. He wants to make nature the divine embodiment of the supreme. Supramental transformation is, is to play that role. The psychic transformation after rising to the spiritual change, notice psychic transformation, after rising into the spiritual change, that very spark in us is now universal, can also be completed, integralized, exceeded and uplifted by a supramental transformation. In supermind is the integrating light, the consummating force, the wide entry into the supreme ananda. The psychic being uplifted by that light and force can unite itself with the original delight of existence from which it came overcoming the dualities of pain and pleasure, delivering from all fear the shrinking mind, life and body, it can recast the contacts of existence in the world into terms of the divine Ananda. And this is the aim of our evolution. Now, in these three transformations, you can clearly see the vision of the Veda. Two creations. We start with the second creation, with psychic being which descended. And with that, because psychic being descended to save, to redeem the fallen emanations. And we start with this redemption, with the sacrifice. This is a constant sacrifice in the Veda. 
yajamana within us. It is the psychic being who is doing this sacrifice, who brings powers, gods into action within our uh, embodied state, within our mind, life and body invokes and brings those powers to act upon us and transform us. And this is the constant evolution. All right, I will stop here. I, I finished my presentation on first presentation in two rounds, which is good. Uh, and uh, I open to your questions if you have some or observations or saying, oh, I learned something immense because this thing changed my life. What I'm sharing with you today, I, because of this, I started to understand Vedas, Upanishads, Gita, <laughs> Sri Aurobindo, Savitri, everything becomes clear what we are dealing with, our double nature and why it is here, what it is for, and so on. Yeah? Some thoughts? So then there is no need to fight this duality, right? It's more uh, flowing with it and understanding the purpose behind it rather than fighting as a, as a contradiction. Fighting duality, it's like duality is outside. We are duality. Yeah? We are constantly, if you start observing yeah. yourself psychologically, you will see that you have a constant dialogue between you who is better and you who is not better, <laughs> let us say. And between them, there is a constant kind of... Uh, trying to figure out where to go or be selfish, be selfish now, be selfish, yeah? Because it's it's just working better, yeah? If you will preserve energy, you will not be destroyed, you will not be abused, or do the sacrifice, become something greater than you are on the surface, which is more difficult because it is challenging the surface and the surface is biting back. It doesn't want that, you are very kind, very good, very sincere, very humble, so, and so on. Mm, truthful, especially very dangerous to be truthful to your boss or something, because you may meet misunderstanding from his side and you will be harmed. Your outer being will be harmed. Your inner being will be never harmed. So uh, it is ongoing process. And until it is done, until the psychic is in front, it will go on. And we will still have this consciousness, you know, we are conscious of something, we are suffering, conscient yeah, of what we did. I feel guilt, I feel, I feel that I am not really up to the mark. It's quite interesting. All those movements are the results of this dialogue between our two beings. Yeah. And um, it can... I'll go ahead. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I want you, please. I can go ahead. I'm just saying that um, because our other life, uh, you know, when we are not with you in this space, other life has 300, 400 million other several stuff which goes on in your mind, in your being, in your space, in your environment. Then, uh, so even though at this time, it's like, you know, we are open like sponge and we kind of absorb, like I'm speaking from me, I can absorb what you're saying, but I'm not able to live in this consciousness at all other hours and all other days. And, um, and uh, even though these words uh, uh, like kind of descend onto you because you probably create this space and this energy. So one is, uh, you know, able to just take it, but outside of it, how does one um, kind of uh, like, uh, you know, if I would read the same notes three days later, they sound very difficult. Like, you know, it just, all those words sound so difficult suddenly. I'm speaking for, for me and uh, for me, I want to be able to kind of, um, live in its uh, uh, presence and be uh, uh, tuned into uh, this knowledge 
so that uh, i mean that's how i feel that's my whole purpose of uh, being here actually so how can how can how can one do that or how can you help or what what is the way to live in the world then i mean if i mean what just just what do you what what to do while by the way yeah well what, that's what we all do we are looking for the way out we are looking for the better ourselves yeah uh, that is that dialogue led us to to this to the necessity to to be out of this misery with thousands of things and uh, which are not really answering the question why we are here and what we are here for and once we find this answer understanding how the world is made we are really beginning our journey and then we want that presence if presence is coming if you feel the presence from this if you feel the pressure from above or in the heart, there's something is moving. You have to follow it, follow your heart, follow your higher presence. Don't follow your outer things. Outer things will be done by nature anyhow. You will do them as you do them. It, nobody asks you to stop doing what you do. And just you have to do it with another view or consciousness, more consciously doing the same thing no hurry, no result-oriented uh, desire or, or some success-oriented um, action. This would be the beginning. It's a long path and it's not an easy one because at the end we have to change. We have to change also instruments of our knowledge. Our body is not fitting for this knowledge. And this knowledge is not mental knowledge, it cannot be thought out. It is given to us by the higher beings by rishis and because of that they already had that realization they gave it to us for us to realize so we're kind of mimicking you know faking till we making <laughs> fake it till you make it they say in the u.s <clears throat> we are not faking we are inspired by it it is in the u.s they are faking <laughs> 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 be inspired be inspired look with your with your fire in the heart you have that uh, aspiration quality aspire for your higher being for your higher qualities um, and you will feel that they they change your life and you will have much more enjoyment in your life because it's much more joyous to have uh, true life than uh, untrue and successful no, I, I meant I meant the stuff you're teaching. Like for me to remember, there are these three and all of that. I generally I'm inspired and I'm into all of the whatever I'm doing. But I, I'm saying that it's difficult for me to register this as knowledge and words and terms as things. All I right. Oh, that is that does, doesn't That's matter. Doesn't matter at all. The principle you got the principle. You got the understanding that you are of double nature, that something in you doesn't know, something in you knows. You can refer to yourself. That's why integral education has first principle, nothing can be taught because everything is already within you. You have to only reveal it. You have to allow it to come to the front. And you... for me, it works better with the, you know, like with like if I read words, suppose you show me the symbol uh, of your window, then when I see, going up and I see it down, I can understand, I can feel it. So sometimes I feel that may, am I not getting enough knowledge <laughs> because I understand in a different way. So I Fine. just want to be with class fully and also not have a gap between one Monday and the next Monday in terms of my studying with you. Also. Very so. good. We will be gradually growing into, into understanding of the Vedas and Upanishads. Yes, this is the entry, yes, the psychological entry. It involves us in some way that we have to be psychologically, subjectively involved. Great. Thank you, Rashi. So I'm over time already. So if there is nothing else, then I am closing. Um, uh Oh, sorry, I was just asking uh, because my network is really bad, so I missed on to certain things in between. Oh, you so can you listen saying, to the recording. Yes, it's okay. Probably, I, yeah, probably then I listen to the recording. Yeah, because uh, to repeat the same is a bit different. Yes, yeah, so sorry. 
Um, but if it is something no. urgent, please uh, tell me. So maybe it is uh, something. So I was just um, asking about this one thing which meant you were mentioning that uh, there is this one can uh, bridge this gap between the surface being and the psychic being. Right. So you would talk about that probably so. Absolutely. So this is the mother's yoga, yes? To dive deep into the heart, into the cave of the heart, in the Vedic literature. And from there, you will see that there is a flame which is constantly calling to the, to the divine uh, in the midst of darkness, immortal uh, among mortals. It is him, that flame. And if we bridge that flame to the surface, if it can come to our mind, vital and body, then it will illumine them and make them receptive of the divine truth. That's the idea of psychic transformation. Great Om Shanti 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 Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Namaste.